This video is about the free life we have in Christ from Galatians, how to find it, seize it, and stand in it, and live in it every single day. Let's get started. Hey guys, Joe here, back to the word. Today with a cool video, freedom and living free, fantasy or reality, Galatians and the free life in Christ. I'm gonna walk through the first chapter of this book together with you guys. I thought it had some great things to talk about. This is Traveling Light, Galatians and the Free Life in Christ, published by InterVarsity Press, written by Eugene Peterson. This book was originally released in the early 1980s and it has been recently released in an expanded edition with questions at the back for discussion and study. I was sent this by the publisher for a review. I really loved it and I wanted to share it with all of you as a helpful resource in claiming the Christian freedom, the freedom we're supposed to have in Christ and walking with him daily in it. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Before I do get started with the video and walking through the first chapter, I did a shorter video reviewing this work um, and this book and also a blog post. You can get those links in the description of this video. This is the channel Back to the Word. So this channel is about equipping and encouraging you to read the Bible, good books, and have conversations that matter. And I think this is a really important conversation around the Bible and living out what it means to be free in Christ um, and trusting him in our daily walk. And so I wanted to share it with all of you. So you can go to the blog post, the written one, to get some of these quotes that I'm going to share with you. Um, I have an outline, some other things written up for the review. But for this video specifically, I want to have this conversation about the free life in Christ and what that means. So in his first chapter, Free for All, Eugene Peterson talks about, we live in a world awash in fantasies of freedom. I am current I'm in the United States. Eugene Peterson, when he was writing this, was a pastor in Bel Air, Maryland, as a Presbyterian church. And he was noticing something in the culture, that there were lots of these promises of freedom, these desires to be free. We leave, live in the land of the free, in the home of the brave, but he says no one is living free. And so then you turn your perspective to the church, and you should think, surely Christians are living free, free from anxiety, free from worry, trusting God walking and what it means to be in a relationship with God and experiencing Christian freedom. And he's like, that's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that they too are seeing that they're living not free. Um, and so he goes on to say in this first chapter, he says, the fantasies are barren in this world that's promises of freedom. They give birth to nothing in word or deed. He said, they're just hollow. Everyone wants freedom, but no one is living in it. He says, living in the land of the free has not made us free. We are a nation of addicts and complainers. Being provided with freedom of religion has not made us free. Coercive cults and enslaving superstitions continue to proliferate in our culture. He says, but not everything that has to do with freedom is fantasy. So he's showing there is hope. There are also realities of freedom. And so he switches on page eight in this volume to talking about being that God is wants us to be free. That at the center of that belief, Jesus is one of the freest people in the world. He wants to free us up to live. He says, when I live in faith, I live freely. When I set God at the center of my life, I realize vast freedoms and surprising spontaneities. When I center life in my own will, when what I want, my freedom diminishes markedly. I live constrained and anxious. And so he's saying the key to freedom is putting God at the center of our lives. He says it is a daily task to discriminate between the fantasies of freedom and the realities. And I need help to do this. That And I need help. And where can I get that help? And so he talks about the burden for writing this book before he shares where he's going to get that help. Ultimately, he's going to show us that the Apostle Paul is the specialty uh, specialist in Christian freedom. He uses the Greek word for freedom or its variations more than any other New Testament author. Um, 
over 28 uses in Paul's letters, and the most concentrated uses of those words is in the book letter to the Galatians. And so that's what Eugene Peterson is going to use in this book to help us talk through what it means to be free and live the free life in Christ. But before we get there, he shares the burden for this book on page 8 and into page 9. He talks about in the early 80s, freedom in Christ seemed the truth in need of focus. So he talks about that sometimes when we focus on one particular truth, we have to neglect, he says, we don't want to neglect the truth of the whole, of all of scripture or what the main point is. But he said, this is a truth that needed focused on during the time when he was writing this book. He says, when I looked at people, I realized how unfree they were, even his church. He says, they were buying expensive security systems to protect their possessions from burglary. They were overcome with anxieties in the face of rising inflation. They were pessimistic about the prospects of justice and peace in a world bristling with sophisticated weapons and nuclear devices. They were living huddled, worried, defensive lives. He says, I wanted to shout this objection to the Christians in my church. Don't live that way. You're a Christian. Our lives can be a growth into freedom instead of a withdrawal into anxious weariness. He says, I was determined to seek ways in which I could awaken a hunger and thirst for the free life among people who had lost an appetite for it. And then, having awakened that appetite, to find the food and drink that would satisfy it. So he talks about, goes into different things um, that this pursuit of sharing, um, this truth with others about how to grow an appetite for the free life and then to actually find it. And so he talks about the word freedom. He talks about freedom is not an abstraction, it is not a thing, it is a gift and a skill and it is something that we can learn and it is something that has been given to us by God. And so he talks about help from a specialist turning to Paul and his letter to the Galatians. He talks about free in Christ, we are free for all. It says that then this freedom is for all who will claim it, stand with it, and follow God. He says this book is an interim report on a continuing work of training and being trained in a way of life developed at God's initiative and in relation to his freedom. It's not really a traditional exposition or commentary. It's more like a prayer, a continuing conversation on what God is teaching us about freedom. I should break here and say this is a work of spiritual theology, which Eugene Peterson would talk about is just theology lived, what God has spoken about himself lived into our lives. If you know Eugene Peterson and his work, he does this over multiple books that he has. He is about spiritual theology. He takes it for granted that we have read the Bible, we've read scripture, we know what it means, we know what it says, but then he's trying to get kind of underneath that purpose and meaning and say, how is that actually um, on the ground, boots on the ground in our life applied to us? How do we get to those principles and actually live them out in our time, in our way? That theology is not just supposed to stay in our heads, but it's supposed to make its way into our lives to be lived. And so he's doing the exact same thing in this book. So he talks about, I'm putting in, um, he continues, there, uh, there's some things to make very clear from this study. And then he talks about um, freedoms and fantasies and talks about being pioneers of the free spirit. Um, he says, I am convinced that people settle for far too little in matters of freedom on page 13 as he ends the chapter. And so then he's going to go through um, different chapters. I'm going to go through some of them briefly and just give you a preview of what you're going to get. Check out my blog post and get this book from InterVarsity Press, an excellent book if you want to share, um, learn more about this. Um, this book has a, a just over 200 some, 216 pages. It's about 170 or so pages of actual reading. Really easy to digest and go through. And the discussion questions I found personally very helpful as well. So he's going to cover topics as he goes through the letter to the Galatians and then extrapolates these lessons that we can learn uh, about freedom. He's going to talk about how we are free to live, that God has given us freedom and that the story has God at the center of it. Um, he talks about we are free to change because what of, of what Christ has done in our lives and what he does in our lives, that we're free to resist the lies of the enemy. We're free to resist those who would want to manipulate us and pull us into fantasies of freedom that lead to 
death. He talks about um, we're, fear to, we're free to receive, that we are free to trust others and to trust in, uh, in a certain way because of what God has done for us. We can trust him and then we free us up to actually love is one of the chapters. And it frees us up to give generously towards others. It also talks about we have the freedom to create that we are sets us free. God sets us free to live for him and towards him with people and the world around us. And then we are also freedom um, to give. And then he also talks ultimately that we are free to die. And what he means by that is our future is secure, that we can actually live with risk. We can live by faith and we can ex- have the surety that we will experience the resurrection. And so he's like, there are some things in our lives that are going to be different because we have these types of freedoms. And we learn about those freedoms from the book of Galatians. And you have this book, if you want to pick it up, to have Paul as well as Eugene Peterson as your guide. So with that, I encourage you to pick up the book. If you have questions about Eugene Peterson, about this book, about other things, I would love to hear those questions uh, in the description of this video. If you like this video and content like this about the Bible, help you, or good books and conversations that matter, please like, subscribe, hit that like button on this video so that more people see this video and hear about these truths. Um, I want to leave you uh, with the final quote, one of the major quotes that's used on the back cover of this book um, that I thought was really good and I wanted to end with it. Um, He talks about that if there is a story of freedom to be told, the story must begin with God. This is something we combat in our culture all the time is the longing for freedom starts with us. And the core theme of this book is true freedom is experienced when God is at his right place in our lives. When we live the way God has ordered the universe and the way we are supposed to live towards him, we experience freedom. And so it goes on to say, the Bible is not a script for a funeral service, but the record of the, of the proclaimed and witnessed God bringing new life to the dead. That we apart from God are dead. We apart from God are in bondage. And only when we are connecting our lives to him, specifically through what Christ has done, do we experience true freedom and true life. It goes on to say, everywhere it is a story of resurrection life where we expect death. And there behind, in between the lines is read when we connect ourselves to God in the relationship we were created for with him. So not a book primarily on freedom from sin, but a book about living a life connected to God and the freedom that we have in Christ. So with that, check out the book. Link's in the description for this video. Check out my written review, even a shorter review if you want to know more about the book. Until next time, continue to read, treasure, follow the word. God bless, and I'll see you guys soon.